Today I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about Lightroom's all new point color feature and I'm using Lightroom Classic for this tutorial but you can find this tool in the latest version of Lightroom CC and in Photoshop's Camera Raw as well. Point color is a really good tool for tweaking the colors in your image and there's actually quite a lot to go over so let's just get straight into it. So jumping into Lightroom's develop module if you scroll all the way down to the color mixer you can see that in the latest version of Lightroom it has changed quite a bit. You no longer have the old edge cell and the color panels but instead you have a mixer and a point color panel. Now in this video we'll be focusing on the point color feature but just as a quick side note if you want to keep on using the old color mixer tools you still can. In the mixer panel you now have an adjust menu where you can find the HGL and the color panels which are the same as in the older versions of Lightroom but now let's jump over to the new point color tool. When you first open up point color for a photo it will look a bit empty and there's not much that you can do so in order to get started with it you have to select this eyedropper tool right here and then you can just click on any part of your image to sample that color so that you can then tweak that color. So I'll for example click on this blue area right here in the sky and now you can see that we now have this blue color selected here in our point color panel and we can now start to tweak it. Now the samples in the point color tool are actually called swatches so I'll be using the words sample and swatches but they mean the same exact thing. Now if you can't see this big colored box right here you can just click on this little arrow to open it up. Below this box you can see that we actually have all the same hue saturation and luminous tweaks to our selected color in here as we used to in the HSL panel so we can do all of the exact same tweaks here in the new point color panel as we could before but now we can actually pick the color we want to tweak from the image itself instead of using the preset colors. So you can tweak the color you selected with the sliders here just as you've been able to in the previous versions of Lightroom but you now can also use this big box to tweak the color in kind of a more visual way. The dot that you see here is the color we sampled and if I drag this circle you can see that we are actually changing the blue tones of our image. Going to the left or to the right will tweak the hue of the selected color and you can also see the hue slider moving as I move the circle in the box and going up and down will tweak the saturation of the color. If you hold down Alt on Windows or Option on a Mac the movements will be a bit slower so you can do more precise tweaks if you need to. If you hold down Command on a Mac or Control on Windows, you'll be locked to only horizontal movements or changing the hue of the color. If you hold down Shift, you'll be locked to vertical movements or only tweaking the saturation. Now, to change the luminance of the selected color, you can use the second box on the right hand side of the panel. Here, once again, if you hold down Alt or Option, you can move the circle slower. To reset any of the changes you've made, just double click on the value that you want to reset. Now below these two boxes is a third box which shows you the before and after of the color tweaks you've done. So on the left you have the color you originally sampled and on the right you have the color after the tweaks you've made. You can also see this change in the little box on the top of the point color panel. Now below these tweaks there is a range slider. This will essentially brighten or narrow down the selection you've made. So anytime you sample a color, Lightroom will select a range of colors around the sampled color and you can now tweak the range that is selected with this range slider. If you click on the little arrow next to the range slider you'll see more ways to tweak the sample color range. Now these hue saturation and luminous tweaks will really let you dial in the exact color that you want to tweak in your image and the little dot in the sliders is the original tone that you sampled and you can then drag the bar in the middle left or right to tweak the selection and you can make the bar wider or narrower from these handles to have a bigger or a smaller selection of tones and you can grab these little handles at the end to tweak the feathering of the selection to make it smoother or harsher. You also have a visualize range button on the bottom that will turn everything else black and white and only show you the range of colors that you will be tweaking. This can really help you dial in the exact tones that you want to change. While tweaking the range you can also see the color range that you are selecting here in the point color panel's big colorful box. So if the original sample that you did and this simple range slider won't get the job done for you even though I think it most likely will, you can use these more refined sliders too if you need to. So once you're happy with the tweaks you've done to a single color and you want to tweak some more colors just click on the eyedropper and then select the color you want to tweak next. Now if you click on a color that is too similar to a color that you've already sampled Lightroom will actually just take you over to that color instead of creating a new swatch. And if you need to delete a color sample or a swatch just right click on it and select delete swatch. One big thing to note with sampling colors is that Lightroom will use the current image that you see on the screen instead of the raw image data. So if you do some heavy tweaks to your color so for example let's just make this sky very deep blue and then create a new swatch from this new sky color Lightroom will now create a sample from this new blue tone in our image instead of the original raw data and this way we can kind of keep on going further and further with our color tweaks even though this is something I wouldn't personally ever do but I just wanted to say this so that you know how uh, the point color sampling actually works. 
works. So when it comes to sampling colors, there are a couple of limitations that I wanted to talk about as well. So when you're creating your samples, you are actually limited to only having eight swatches in one image. So you can't keep on creating more and more samples, but you're limited to eight at least for now. But obviously this is something that could change in future updates of Lightroom. Now you also cannot sample areas that are too bright, too dark, or just lack color. So what about the good old HSL panel and how do these two work together? Now the HSL panel is still working in the exact same way as it did before and it actually works kind of higher in hierarchy compared to the point color so it always comes before the point color tweaks. So for example if I make the building a bit more red in the old HSL panel and then create a sample with point color and let's just make the building orange here in the point color tool now and then we go back to HSL and actually change the color of the building to be yellow with the HSL panel we can no longer use our sample in the point color tool because the area that we sampled is red or pink but there's actually no red or pink in the image now after we change the hue of the red zones in the HSL panel. So the old HSL panel always comes before the new point color tool so I'd actually recommend only sticking to one of these two tools or then creating all of your color tweaks in the HSL panel and once you're really happy with them you can go over to the point color tool to even further tweak the colors if you need to. But the fact that the point color tool actually uses what you are currently currently seeing on the image instead of using the raw data of the file makes me have very mixed feelings about the new tool and I don't really even know if I'm going to be using this too much because I like to go back and forth with my image so the fact that it's not using the raw data but instead using what you're currently seeing on the image actually makes me I don't know I have mixed feelings about this and I'll see if I'll ever really start to use this tool at all in the end but I guess the future will tell. But that is it. That is all I have about the all new point color feature in Lightroom. And I really think it's a cool feature, but I don't know if it's going to find a place in my workflow because I've grown to love the HSL panel and I don't know if I'm going to ever start to use the point color at all because I'll just love the HSL panel. But if you have any questions about the point color, just drop a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you out. But that is it. That is all I have for today. So thank you very much for watching and I hope I will see you in the next one. Shoo.